we look ahead to second quarter, we catch up with Ms. Byrne and the speech team, and go back in time on this week's episode of Laker Nation. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Laker Nation. I'm your host, Shelby Kocher. Today, Tuesday, November 4th, is general election, so be sure to get to the polls and cast your vote. Zach caught up with some high school teachers to discuss upcoming quarter goals. The beginning of the second quarter is upon us. What students choose to do in this second quarter will influence their performance for the rest of the year. What tips do you have for any student? Um, I would just recommend that they ask questions in class um, because it's really hard for me to read minds. Do your homework. Ask questions when you have them and get eight hours of sleep every night, at least. Oh, well, I think the students need to really apply themselves and to make the most out of their education by getting involved and pushing themselves as much as they can in all their classes. Do you think the first or second quarter of a semester is more important? I think the first quarter is more important because you're kind of setting up um, a precedent for how you're going to act and what you're going to do in the class. Is there anything you would like to see your students doing for second quarter? Continue to stay motivated and look for things that are coming up that you might be excited about and focus on that. Try to improve on study habits, note taking, organizational skills, um, time management. What is your favorite part about being a teacher? Well, my favorite part about teaching would be obviously my interaction with the students. I really like interacting with the students on a day-to-day -day basis. Getting to know kids. Um, I get to interact with multiple kids. Uh, interacting with you wonderful students. Thank you. Know you. What has been the most memorable event so far this year? The air horn. That's always a good one. Yes. Um, Peacewise functions and derivatives. All right. Do you remember Nash being in the tent? <laughs> yes, I remember Nash being... <laughs> How could I forget? Yeah, that was a good one too. <laughs> I compared a young man to a superhero in my conditional statement, uh, so he now thinks he has superpowers. Who has taught you the most in life? In my life? Yeah. Oh, man. Up to this point, uh, one of my college professors, his name was Joe Tewinkle. He was a very educated man and, and really kind of took me under his wing and taught me a lot. And then uh, my college football coach, Jesse Godding, he taught me more about not the game of football, but more about how to be a man and how to, to deal with situations that, you, that come around in life. Uh, I would say my, my mom, she, she told me uh, even if I became a ditch digger, I was going to be an educational educated ditch digger. So. I remember when that was on the Absolutely. wall. Absolutely. If I look into your eyes, I'm going to start giggling. <laughs> You're going to see my soul. <laughs> you can look at Thanks, Zach. This week in Laker News. Today is the general election for city council positions as well as school board members, so don't forget to hit the polls and vote. There will be a corn drive drivers meeting at 7.15 a.m. on Wednesday, November 5th in the Ag Room. The pie fundraiser ends on Wednesday, November 5th, which is tomorrow. Make sure you are collecting money as you sell. Again, the order form and money are due to Miss Byrne on Wednesday, November 5th. The fitness center is open for use Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 2.35 to 4.30 p.m. and Tuesday and Friday from 2.35 to 4 p.m. The Varsity and JV Volleyball Banquet will be on Sunday, November 9th from 6 to 7 p.m. in the High School Commons. If you plan on attending, sign up in Ms. Hoag's classroom. We are transitioning from fall to winter sports. Basketball season starts next week. Boys basketball starts November 10th and girls basketball starts November 17th. Gymnastics also starts November 10th. Updating the FFA National Convention, congrats to the team Greenhand who claimed second place last week. Tara had an opportunity to sit down with Miss Byrne and talk about the speech team in the upcoming year. I'm here with Ms. With Byrne, who is the coach of the speech team. So this is your second year coaching the speech team, correct? Correct. How did last year go? 
Last year went really well. We had several people advance uh, to, from subsections to sections, and then we had two uh, competitors advance to the state tournament, uh, which is almost unheard of for a new team, and we were starting from scratch. So uh, we used to have speech way back when. I think the last speech team that we had before last year was 13 years ago, um, maybe more than that, longer, and, um, and so we were really excited to have such success our first year. Okay. I heard that Jackson Triplett and Hannah Paulson went to state last year. How did that go? Um, it went well. It was our first year at state, obviously, um, and so they kind of got their feet wet. They were competing against the best of the best, and so they got a taste for what that was like, and both of them left hungry for more. So the awesome thing about Hannah and Jackson is that they weren't seniors last year, so they get to compete again this year and make it to state again. Okay. Yeah. What obstacles, if any, did you face? I would say being the new school on the block uh, was definitely an obstacle because the other schools who have been competing for 20 years straight, um, you know, kind of have this down to an art form. They compete against each other every year. They kind of know the ins and outs. And so to have this new team come out of nowhere and uh, start competing and not only competing, but able to compete well um, was kind of different and uh, brought its own set of challenges with it. Okay. What is speech all about if, for someone who doesn't know? Well, um, it's about a lot of different things. First of all, being able to communicate um, with different people and in different, um, different areas. Uh, so just communication and being able to get up there and speak in front of people. You'd be surprised, but a lot of people are terrified of public speaking, um, even to just get up in front of their class and speak. And so it's, it's about calming those nerves and about allowing people the chance to feel comfortable with their own voice. And then beyond that, it's about expression, being able to feel comfortable in your own skin and, um, and say what you want to say. Who is your favorite inspirational speaker? Uh, inspirational speaker. I would say uh, Sarah Kay. She is a spoken word poet. Um, and I have watched all of her videos on YouTube and I followed her through her TED Talks. Um, so yeah, she's just, she is someone who says what she needs to say in a very eloquent way. If you could dye your hair for a day, what color would it be? To not see this question coming. Um, why not purple? Yep, purple, just because. Okay, mm -hmm. I have a mystery question for you today. And it is, at least how many languages has Shakespeare been translated into? I don't know. I'd have to ask Siri. There are a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you know? Yeah. How many? 80. 80 different languages. Well, there you go. <laughs> also lasting, timeless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you for your letting us take some of your time today. You're welcome. For your after school work. Um, so how, do, how would somebody contact you? If somebody wants to contact me about speech, I mean, I'm here throughout the day. Obviously, they can just stop in. Otherwise, um, just shoot me an email at my school email address, and I'd be happy to get back to you. OK, mm -hmm. thank you again for letting us take some of your after school work time. Of course. To talk with us today. Thank you. Thanks, Tara. Back in 1971, HLWW offered students the first televised broadcasting program in Minnesota. Neil Sidine ran Crud and Crumb TV out of the high school, along with over 20 students in the early years. Some of these students are names you may recognize, including Dale Decker, John Ganyu, Steve LePage, and Greg Burkholz, among others. Let's take a look back at some of what was going on on Crud TV. Some people like apples, some like chocolate cake, some others think Trotchmut is best of all. We here at KRUD, Channel 3 in Howard Lake, want to know what you would like us to provide. We aim to please, so provide us with a target. Just jot down your suggestions and give them to someone who looks as if he's an authority. He'll appreciate it, and so will we. situation that we have now in Vietnam, it's about, you know, the peace treaty. Uh, Randy, what do you think about this? Do you think it'll last? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think we should have finals. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, and sport became a real thing. The generation gap between player and coach has always been a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> just had to get down the other and you had a sport. <laughs> What'd you learn how to read? Well, you and I had no punctuation. <laughs> Look at that. There ain't no punctuation, and I'm not reading it. <laughs> You put six I words there. Right? This, this is a walk to it. Today we told you that the Minnesota Fighting Saints would either do or die. As it turned out, they have another life. Former President Wayne Belisle met with the team for over two hours yesterday, and he came up with this proposal that most of the players <laughs> seem to like. The terms of the proposal will be made public for at least two days. Many people are asking what happened to the Boston, Boston group that were supposed to come with $1.4 million. Well, the reason for that is that they have to clear it through the New York bank before they can give the money to the Saints. Not because they're rare, but they are tame pet rocks. That's right, plain rocks with an instruction book on how to train them cost $4 at Dayton's or any big department store. So the next time you hear someone call you a rockhead, stop and think. Rock it. <laughs> well, uh, you can tell it's... Oh, what about the Gophers, Ray? Uh, <laughs> they're uh, in trouble, you know, about uh, violations. And they could get up to three years probation. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> In the sports world today at Howard Lake Waverly High School, the ninth grade ping pong aces will match their talents against the scene. What did you see administer these injections? At first, Dr. Entrus himself, then Sherpy and Hantel. Hantel did it infrequently. We thought of him as a decent person. Did you see Claire kill? I did not see it myself. Both Schwartz and Geber, the two prisoners who had to hold a victim during the injection, told me about it. But we didn't waste much time discussing it. It was such an ordinary event. The witness mentions different names in connection with these special duty prisoners. Were their names Whirl and Felix? There were many special duty prisoners who had to do this job. And didn't the prisoners do the killing? In the beginning, they had to. So the prisoners were killed by their own people. We protest these tactics by which the defense seeks to blame prisoners for actions carried out under the threat of death. The troops in the camp were subjected to the same threat. In no instance has it been proved that anything was done to those who refused to take part in these killings. That's easy to say now. That does it for this edition of Lager Nation. If you have any questions or show ideas, please contact us at our email, klkr at hlwwschools.org. And head over to our Facebook page and YouTube channel and give us a like. See you next week. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Laker Nation. I'm your host, Joe.